Hello, fellow peoples of the internet. It's me, your host, Ashley, and welcome to Archetype, sponsored by Lenovo and AMD. I'm happy to have you guys here. If you guys are in the chat, whenever you guys are there, just say hi. I always like seeing people in the chat saying hi. And um, yeah, we're going to get into it. So this month, uh, it's a new month now, so happy April. And every month that means we'll be doing a new character at least that's the trend that we've gotten to keep going so far so so far so good um and so this archetype um i decided on the student i guess um but it actually comes from a character idea that i had a while ago that um i believe the drawing's still on my instagram but i always really liked this idea of taking um monkey characters and uh combining them with shaolin monks because i'm a again a huge fan of puns um so monkey but no in, in reality i think this would be like a pretty fun design to kind of explore or to explore again and see what i can come up with um and we can do the student and then probably next month we can do something like the mentor, right? So um, we can kind of play with uh, these ideas of who these characters can be. And the reason I chose monkeys is I just think they're super interesting um, structure wise. Like they're very close to humans, you know, in the sense that they, they can express tons of personality. But I also think their variety is so interesting, you know, from something like the um this one that we have here versus like the proboscis monkey um i don't know this kind but i love how, like there's so much personality already um in these characters so i think it'd be really fun to do some variety um with that and then play with some fun uh it kind of like shaolin type um clothing, but see if we can add some sort of element of uh, fantastical to them and see what we can come up with, you know. Not really sure what that element of fantasy or fantastical idea will be, but I think uh, I think that'll be something to kind of play around with today. Um, and uh, yeah, so hi YouTube, Osaseido, martial art monkey student. That's, that's basically the idea. Uh, but I'm going to start out with like what I did um, Last time, which was really nice, was actually just doing a couple like studies first um, of what we already have. I think it's really handy and also just really good practice to, um, you know, look at, you don't have to get really crazy, but I think it's really important to look at the basic shapes of things. Because um, there's a reason why, you know, for reference and stuff, if you're looking up references, there's reasons why you pick the references you pick. Um, and part of doing studies and stuff is kind of like breaking that down as to why you think that that's a good reference or why you think it's interesting. Um, and I will say that our, our eyes tend to kind of fool us a lot. We think we understand a thing, uh, but I think it's actually until you slow down and draw that thing, it isn't until you actually kind of connect with it and understand why you think it's interesting. Um, you know, and you'll just kind of read on proportions that are really interesting. So like, for example, I really like that in the proportion of this, if you look at it as like a rule of thirds or when you're looking at just proportions, I love that the eyes are like way up here. So when we push this design for like a character, so to speak, um, could we get away with pushing that even higher up, you know, or making the nose even longer, even bigger or something like that. So playing with what's already there, and saying, okay, how can I take that? You know, I love this like little, like kind of like weird bob haircut, you know? Again, thinking of it more of not from what, I'm just drawing it. I'm kind of looking and trying to figure out where, where is the character, you know, um, within the reference that I can kind of pull from and, and draw from. Um, and I think that part is, is a, uh, the more important part about about when you do reference. Um, and it's also the fun part. It's not just looking at something, but it's trying to say, you know, why is a thing a thing? And again, they don't have to be 
super pretty drawings. They don't really need to be anything except you just trying to kind of get um, a basic understanding of, you know, your, your subject matter, especially if you're not used to drawing certain things, you know, um, you know, maybe, I mean, you could be a professional at drawing monkeys, but I always think it's still going to be really important to, um, continue to draw and, and have reference of that thing. So, you know, you can do something like that. You don't have to go much farther than, you know, again, something like this, just to get in some sort of idea. And again, I'm just really, it's just trying to look at um, shapes that I think are interesting. So I'll draw this little... Uh, So also blocking and figuring out shape-wise, what are they? So when I look at this kind of bluish monkey, um, I do see kind of this like weird tapered shape, right? It's kind of like this weird box shape and it's got these little ears, right? So if you break it down into like its simplest forms and then if we add the muzzle on top of that, um, we also get something that's kind of like that. So, you know, break, breaking it down this way and then all you have to really do is just add, I like how close the eyes are together. Looking at like, kind of like the goggles um, shape of all the, all these uh, references is really interesting. So I think it's kind of cool how close together his eyes feel. Um, and again, that's something that we can look at and go, oh, can we exaggerate that for, you know, a character later on. Um, and these huge, furry, uh, kind of like cheeks are really fun. I really love this shape. You could easily turn it into like a big, cool, like old man beard or something. So I think just playing off of what's already there is, uh, is it's a really great way to just kind of one, not stress too much when you're first trying to just like do some studies or whatever. Um, let me switch my brush. I don't like this brush. I tried, but I don't like it. Um, you know, just trying to figure out shape-wise, like, what's, what we can push and stuff. But yeah, this is also just technically kind of a warm-up for me as well. Um, I haven't really drawn much today, so... And really just, uh, it's more about looking at the proportion. So I really like this um, little black monkey here. I think this one's really interesting. I think I want to try to personify something like that. I grabbed the other ones just as studies. Um, but that character, or like that drawing speaks to me a lot. Because um, he feels, or she, it's probably a she because it's got a little baby, but... Um, she feels young and like i think it, she has like a lot of attitude that um we can pull into a character type um fairly easily and we don't have to um you know, directly translate this character. Like I said, I kind of want to do something fantastical. I'm not really sure what yet. I'm thinking like, I can kind of start playing with it now, but part of me is wondering what would happen if I like gave them kind of really big ears. Just how we kind of do it with elves. I'm like, oh, what if it's like a fantastical like elf monkey or something? Like, what does that do? What does that create? Um, Like, I think that could be kind of fun, playing with something like that. And then I was thinking, you know, if they're, uh, 
they're monkeys and they live in the forest, then maybe it's their sort of um, other technology and thing would things would be probably magical or would be um, possibly somewhat druidish or something like that. Um, so maybe if she has uh, armor or anything like that. Um, then, you know, maybe that's something that we can play with. Maybe these little wooden floating balls. Someone on YouTube was asking what the archetype was and then said, oh, never mind. But just to let you know, it is um, the student and the ideas that we're going to be creating. Um, possibly maybe a martial arts type archetype. Um, with this character. So I think that can be something kind of interesting. Also, this pencil is way nicer <laughs> looking at this drawing. This drawing was terrible. It's such a funny looking drawing. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, it's just a warm up, guys. It's okay. Yeah, so I kind of like taking these ideas. Um, we've got like cool little headdress horns or something. Again, I want to make something that's um, doesn't feel. I don't want it to be just a monkey. I want it to be something that's a little bit off the beaten path. You know, if we do just that, then it's gonna feel like I'm doing Wukong, which isn't the goal. Um, my original one, my original design of something like this was very much that, but I'm trying to throw. Um, Another element that could be kind of interesting with it. Make another thing. Let me give it a little smile. I think for this one, I, I wanted to pick uh, also monkeys because I think there's a lot of um, personality you can get from the reference so immediately for um this week drawing wise like i we're definitely going to come up with some sort of design but like i'm really liking you know what we have already uh at least so i think a lot of it too that i want to go over this week is like kind of exploring some uh expressions and stuff too you know and kind of playing with that um because a lot about character design, and I think I've, I've, you know, hopefully I've kind of shown this, like, the last time when we were doing the Pangolion, I did a bunch of drawings that were gestural of them doing something. I think it's really important, like, it's one thing to go, okay, we're going to design the character and come up with, like, the basic proportions and stuff, right? So if we're drawing, you know... This monkey character, it, it's fine to put it into basically a, a lineup, right, of this is the basic proportions and whatnot, but it doesn't really sell an attitude, and it doesn't sell um, character. You know, maybe they got super long arms, right? Because monkey. So this is fine to explore because this is a very easy pose to do. Right, so when we're exploring shapes and we're kind of trying to come up with an initial um, design, this this is totally fine. This works. Um, but I think oftentimes trying to sell who this character is um, and what they do, I think you just need a lot more um, information. So I think it's way more helpful to put them into, you know, you can put them into scenarios or you can have them posed. Um, or do you like an expression sheet 
so that way we get a better understanding of uh you know who this character is There's a really good book based on um, its first screenplay writing. I think I've mentioned it before, probably. Um, but it talks about how story is action and action is character. So um, well, that really stuck with me a lot about how to kind of even visually, you know, if character is action, then I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, what is the character doing? Um, a lot of good movies or a lot of good stories are about characters taking action and doing something and changing their environment. Um, so being able to visually describe and show like what that character does or who they are um, is way more helpful for your design process. Now this is where we can kind of maybe start taking these initial shapes and we'll, we can kind of start figuring out the the shape language. So I made their face very um, round, but maybe we could do something where the goggle portions may be a bit sharper. Feels kind of just, I'm so angry now. <laughs> you know, do we want angled stuff? I think I, um, you know, if we add sharpness, I actually am not really. You see, if we add sharpness, that um, I think it actually ages the character, right? So if this is the student character, I think uh, they need to feel a bit less craggy about the world. So maybe we can, let's keep the roundedness and see what happens. I think they still need to feel like there's a bit of naivete in their design. I do like these little tufts here, so I think that's cool. And maybe they, they shoot kind of upward because it's we want them to feel very light and young. Um, so we can shoot these upward. We're starting to get something pretty interesting. And we'll keep that hair. So a lot of that, um, so we're gonna be playing with a lot of probably this type of shape, right? Um, again, we can repeat it throughout the arms. Um, the shoulders could even have this kind of like light-ish shoulder taper. Um, the eraser figure. And maybe even the tail could have kind of ended in a, I don't know, kind of more interesting way. Monkey tails don't usually, you know, taper off. Um, they usually do get kind of like roundly. But again, we can play with how we we're making a square, but we're basing our shapes off of this. Like, what does a square look like, right? With having kind of that same form language. Um, so we can do something kind of like that, right? We're being kind of clever about how we're designing. And I like these uh, cool little straps, you know, that I see in, uh, in our reference. But maybe instead of um, straps, maybe they're like plants. Because like we said, we're, we're going with like kind of a nature-y vibe, something more natural feeling. Um, so we could, we could play with the idea that maybe there's some remnants of some leaves or something left. Or make it feel a bit more leaf-like. It would be interesting if they're thorny, so they're almost like protective too. That would be kind of fun. I do like this one, this one shoulder thing. Although part of me wants to make a, 
think I want to make this character try to be more um, female. Just because looking back on all my other characters, I don't think we've done a female character yet. Um, so I think that would be actually kind of fun to try to come up with a, a female design. So with that, even though, you know, you know, she is a monkey, um, probably good to cover up her chest either way. But maybe we can have some cooler, I like, I like the idea of these maybe overlapping and stuff. I think that's still like a fun idea. Um, I'm trying to make something feel, you know, feminine. You know, what? Could her hair look like? I mean, we could still play with it's like rounded little hair. I think we'll have to play with uh, more of her face shape to figure out like how we can get this um, character feeling more feminine. A lot of that's gonna be also in the way you treat um, eyes and stuff. It's gonna be a really big difference in in. Uh, the difference between like male and female. If you look at like Disney characters that are um, anthropomorphic or animalistic, a lot of it, you know, you can have pretty similar shapes from male to female, um, but a lot of it just has to do with eye shapes and um, maybe more slender type of figure. Oh, someone on Twitch is saying the tail looks evil. It is pretty pointed. That is a good point. I mean, we could also play with them. Um, could easily round that off if we wanted to. We can definitely play with it. So I think that's an okay initial start of something. Let's go ahead and try to... Add the forgot the horns. I'll still this I'm still deciding whether the horns is like a, a an accessory. Could be kind of interesting. It's like a crown piece or something that they wear, or if it's actually part of their um, anatomy. I think I like the idea of it being like kind of cool crown piece or something that they wear. So now let's try to um, try to figure out this character's face. Uh, with monkeys, I'm gonna really focus in on um, the goggle shape. And I like this type of. If we look at the proportion of you know the original drawing, um, we have kind of you know, a very wide set of goggles versus something that's kind of shorter in length, but it's still pretty flat, especially in the reference. Um, you know, you can have this kind of be wider, but I think playing with that relationship is really important. I mean, you can test, you can do like really crazy things with it. Um, when you think about, you know, what, what those proportions mean. Um, but I think it's really important to note, if we make it that shape, we shouldn't give the mouth kind of like almost the same mass or like almost the same volume. Um, but playing with kind of like those rules of thirds. Um, And I like how the nose is really dainty, so I think that'll help us um, give like a more um, feminine look as well.
If you guys have any ideas and stuff too in the chat or questions, feel free to shout them out. I'm very concentrated. Me draw, I mean, maybe you guys know, but I try to talk and draw at the same time, of course, because, you know, streaming. But um, sometimes when you're really thinking about shapes and stuff, you'll always do your best work um, kind of in silence, you know? I definitely like to work with people, but when you're really trying to concentrate on, like, design... And thinking about, you know, shapes and stuff. It's good to put on some chill music like we have. And kind of sit back and try to figure out some stuff. So I think maybe thinner... Eyes, and then of course giving some um, hint of like eyelashes or something I think might help. And right now I'll leave the horns off as I just try to figure out shape-wise. Um, we can also play with what people usually reference as something feminine, so like a smaller chin. It's like probably more paint, uh, pointed. Uh, another thing that most female characters have will be a uh, much smaller necks, so even with people, if you draw like a feminine cone-shaped face, um, if I take this and put like a thin neck on it, it'll automatically feel pretty feminine. Whereas if I take that same shape and I put like a thicker neck, um, automatically one feels more masculine than the other. Um, even though technically you're using the same, um, head shape. So a lot of that is also super handy when not just drawing uh, humans, but also drawing something that isn't human um, is keeping in mind that, you know, maybe her counterpart of this species has just like a thicker, thicker neck. Um, and we can also play with different ideas too, where maybe they have much, you know, most will make things feminine by giving them really like much thinner eyebrows. Um, that also helps a lot. Maybe neater hair than their counterparts. I don't know. Uh, oh, happy Tuesday, Synth. Sorry, I'm so focused on drawing, I need to look at the chat. But someone on Twitch is asking, when can bad character design be a good thing? Uh, I guess, I mean, that's a hard one, because honestly, in my opinion, um, if you're designing something and your intention is to be bad, um, you're still bad, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so uh, a lot of it's like, if you're intentionally meaning to have like poor design, that's fine. But people, regardless of whether you intend it or not, are still just going to be like, oh, that's that's poor design. Um, I wouldn't say bad character design can really ever be a good thing. I, that doesn't mean you need to be a good designer. Like that's part of your journey is to become a, a good designer and figuring out what good design is. But um, good design also varies so much from project to project. So, for example, if I draw this really cute, happy little, like, amoeba character or something, um, and I show that to my director, I'm like, I want this to be, like, an enemy type, and they go, we're making Doom. You know, that's bad design. <laughs> you know, if I'm making a cute little character that's, like, squishy and whatever, and I'm working on Doom, that's not, uh, 
that's not proper design, right? Now that doesn't mean that my character is a bad idea, um, but it's just not a good idea for the the story or the you know for the job that you're doing it for or for the the thing that you're making it for right that design might fit super well and be a great design for something like uh spore or whatever that game is right so a lot of good design has to do also a lot with context of a thing because design is about functionality um I'm wondering if, uh, so I have a face that's feeling a bit more feminine now, which I think is cool. Um, kind of got the, the feminine eyes and softer eyebrows, but I still want her to look maybe smuggish or somewhat, you know, she still feel kind of like determined. So I think that's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm also trying to think, you know, when you're designing male and female, um, maybe male characters have the broader, bigger shoulders, whereas female characters maybe have um, shoulders that taper a little bit more. Still triangular in shape, right? But one's going to be a lot smoother of a gesture, right? And then maybe one will have slightly squared off. Larger um, thighs or uh, hips is really common to do for, for feminine character design um, because naturally women have larger hips. Um, and so it's a nice shape. You know, it's that classic hourglass shape that you can play with. It doesn't have to always be that, right? But it's a really great starting point. Um, there are plenty of female characters that I've seen that can be very squared off and a bunch of different things um but it's just usually a good jumping point to figure out something um so you know if we have this as a character versus this as a character maybe the male characters we can make them slightly more squared right so we can have this thicker neck whereas these characters can have the thinner necks um and hopefully um one will feel more masculine in than the other um and it's always going to be one of those things to fight with what people see as feminine versus masculine especially when we're looking at um animals because a male tiger versus a female tiger they pretty much look the same um it's very hard to differentiate between the two, but when we're personifying characters, we want we want those shapes to read um, fairly quickly. And so, you know, sticking with these kind of um, they're kind of like tropes, you know, um, is always a kind of good. It's a good starting or jumping off point, and then from there you can you can change it. But yeah, I think for um, her design, I think we can play with the idea that her shoulders are maybe more drooped and draped. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one and we'll do a more refined design. We'll cut paste that. I almost always force myself to run out of room. <laughs> always. So maybe we'll do one drawing and then we can do a couple. Um, I would like time to do some uh expressions and stuff so i'll probably do that too so i'm gonna go with the maybe the slightly wider hips You know, and, uh, monkeys are super similar to, you know, our anatomy in the way we walk. Maybe we can put that out even more. Try to see if maybe going to a, a very fine taper could be something interesting to play with. Um, 
So again, having having a variation in shape. Um, you know, maybe her feet are a bit more dainty. So I'm constantly just trying to find the the right gesture for these things um, as to what's going to feel right and read right. Um, and especially for 3D stuff, like it's so easy to take this and then later, you know, lasso tool a part of it. Um, And just kind of change some proportions around and say, oh, this works, like what works here versus what works there. Um, a little too far away there. Bring that in. So it's so easy to like go in and change, you know, proportions and, and adjust stuff um, on the fly when, when designing and creating some characters. And I highly recommend you to do so, you know, go in with uh, like even this like liquify tool and start kind of moving stuff around, stretching stuff, pulling things. You know, what happens when I push this down more and start maybe pushing this gesture out a bit more? We can start getting something maybe very interesting and stylized. Um, you know what happens when we pull this up more? Do we get more of a feminine feel? You know, things like that. Um, oops, and let me show you, like, before and after, right? Like, we get way more gesture. Um, so I think it's super important to kind of play with uh, the tools that you have, you know? If you can't do that in 2D or in traditional drawing, you know, try to make uh, use of it in... 3D. It could be interesting if we try to... I want to try to create like a really simple flow. So maybe this character will be a little more simplified stylized than we've done in the past. Um, I do a lot of just tapping and redrawing of things and shapes to try to find something um, interesting. So I think we're getting somewhere with this. And then figuring out, you know, how long. I mean, monkey arms are really long, and in the reference, I really like how long that hand is. It's so it's it's borderline creepy. So we'll, we'll definitely, you know, try to make it feel a bit more elegant. Um, so Sato says, so far looking amazing. Uh, YouTube, uh, Claudio says, hi, can I make a 3D sketch of your character concept? You can, if you would, if you would like to, you totally can. Um, we will also be, if this is your first time joining Archetype, um, I will also be bringing this character into 3D. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're new and joining, I'll, I'll go over that. I, uh... I always start with a um, 2D sketch, and we do some 2D designing. The first, uh, the first new character of the month that we do, and then the next three weeks is um, taking that character design and putting it into um, 3D. So I'll be using ZBrush to basically create a uh, a maquette and a sculpture. Um, and if you look at my Instagram, you'll see that um, 
I think I've posted most of those. I haven't posted the latest one, which was the Pangolion character that we did um, last month, but I'll, I'll be sure to post it again soon. So, so yeah, we'll be we'll be bringing it into 3D. But if you want to do your own version of it, um, or if you guys want to, you know, create your own monkey character to fit into this like same world, you know, I highly implore you to do so. That's kind of the point. Is um, hopefully I'm here to give you guys ideas and help you guys explore. Um, and joining in on the fun is what this is all about. So. Uh, Twitch says, let's say you want to send this design for modeling. Any tips on turning this pose to a T or A pose? Um, yeah, I think, um, there's a lot of, there's obviously tons of studios will have, will have you do, you know, um, a turntable pose. But in my opinion, if you can do this, I think it's really about, you know, I would, I personally, if I'm going, okay, I got to turn this into a T pose now. Um, one, you could easily cut this up and start making one, sort of. You know, you could grab her arm and rotate it and move it out just to see, you know, when you rotate it into the right area, how long is her arm actually becoming and stuff like that. So you can start kind of measuring things. Um, that's a good way to start. Or another thing you can do is, you know, get like a, your quote unquote red marker, for example. Uh, make this bigger so you can see. And I would start blocking out like basic shapes and going, okay, where, how big are these things? These would all be different colors, by the way. So I should probably do that. Um, start looking at like the basic shapes of stuff and saying how, you know, what, what are the, the proportions of everything in relation to one another? Um, so that way you, that's, you know, that's a big part of looking at your design and designing stuff is looking at the proportions and the relationships of each of these shapes. And then once you have these basic shapes, you can um, take that and be able to turn them a lot easier. So it's really about um, understanding the forms that you're drawing from, you know, all angles is a big, it's a big challenge initially. Um, whoops, it's still good. But yeah, that's kind of probably how I would go about it. Um, but if you usually have a three quarter view, usually you can do a three quarter front and a three quarter back. Um, but it really depends. You know, if you're making a model sheet for 2D animation, that they will have you um, do a full turntable. Uh, someone on YouTube, Alyssa, is asking, in your opinion, what do you think makes a design elegant? Um, I mean, again, design is so tricky because it's a lot about the context in which you're creating something. For me, this is my own personal just project with you guys. Um, so I'm kind of art director and I get to say what I think is cool. Um, but to, to talk about like the elegance of something, or I'm assuming also you can just kind of boil that down to what do you think you know, makes a design look like a good design. I think a lot of it is about repetition in your shapes. Um, you know, so like I said, if, if we're sticking with this kind of like pointed triangle, you know, which her face is very much made up of, um, where else can we, you know, put pointed triangles? So like, for example, I'm very aware that I'm making her chest, you know, I'm kind of giving her, even though she doesn't have breasts, I'm, I'm shaping it into a shape that feels like she could. Um, so that that part of her chest will be coming out in 3D, right? So it, it, it helps sell the, the feminine figure of her. Um, and again, that's gonna be same pointed. We can even maybe do a design pattern there, you know, in her fur or something. Um, so it, it feels like this pointed triangle shape, right? Um, you know, and again, we could do pointed triangle shapes with her colors and variations, these pointed triangles on her elbows. Um, so a lot of it is about shape repetition. Um, a lot of people say that, and it's the same thing here, I was trying to taper her uh, feet down a little bit more. So if we point her feet too, you know, make her feet more elegant, 
um, or ladylike, I guess. You could do that. But here, you know, make it a nice point. So yeah, it's a lot about um, shape repetition and knowing that that like what your shape language is that'll help um, sell sell your design. As the saying goes, is uh, repeating a shape you know once is coincidental, but repeating it three times is design. Um, so it's really just about it's being aware of the choices that you're making. Um, and knowing how and why you're you're making those choices. You know, my goal right now is to make her feel feminine um, in some sort of way. You know, we we can play a lot with uh, how we achieve that goal. By just kind of pushing and pulling and playing and playing a lot you know you can play a lot with these shapes like how constantly ask yourself like how thin can you go you know how stylized do i want it how far can i push this out um how long can i make her make her ears really long you know what would that look like right um i constantly love that's that's the beauty of working in 3d or not in 3d sorry in digital is we can constantly be pushing these shapes um ever so slightly more and then we go okay let's see you know what's the difference and we're like oh do we like that more or less you know and it's really easy to keep iterating also if you want something more feminine usually the answer to can be to give them much um longer legs or at least the, the cheat that their legs are or kind of like the longer part of their body we could cheat that even more right now where we could give myself some more room i could grab her legs and run a distort on it and pull her legs even farther and see what that looks like right it's like, ooh, do we like that now? You know, we can swap back and forth. So this is the stuff that I do constantly is doing these these changes and going back and forth and saying, is this good or is this bad? You know, is this breaking my idea or is it not? Because one thing too is monkeys tend to have shorter legs than they have and they have longer arms, right? So do we want to keep the trope of the proportions of a monkey or are we now trying to push it um, and asking yourselves, do we want to push it more to give her maybe a more feminine feel, you know? Um, so this is where you can easily and see how quickly you can feel like what works and what doesn't. You know, I don't think either one's technically bad. Um, I think I like the slightly longer, but I don't want to go too, too long. Um, cause I want her arms definitely to feel longer than they should because we're, we're going with those like eight proportions. So yeah, I hope I'm answering questions for you guys, but as you guys are asking some good questions about design, design's always a really interesting thing to talk about. Um, I really enjoy breaking down like I think a good way to start learning design too for yourself, because it's also design, what I think is good design and what I like in art might be very different from what you like in art. Um, and that's totally fine. But I think it's important as artists to look at a thing and say, why do I like it? And then try to um, make sense of it that way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer. I'm gonna lower the opacity on her for now. And then um, I want to accessorize. So I really like these. I don't know what they carry. If anybody could research and look up and stuff. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But um, I just think that these little carrying things are really interesting. I love the shape. And I love that they're the same color. Like, it's super fascinating um design wise so i think that thing's really cool so i think you know maybe giving her um let's 
some sort of sash. They so kind of, maybe she's holding that behind her. And I don't really know what it's gonna be for her yet, but that's that's fine if we don't know yet. I'm figuring out, you know, um, where this clover clothing is gonna go and her belts and stuff. But yeah, I like the idea of, uh, it's kind of like crossing over. What happens if she has a really long, you know, just long sleeve? Like kind of like lengthy sleeves? Or maybe we can just kind of keep it. Shoulder. Before you get too crazy, which I kind of am, it's good to just kind of block out some basic shapes first and then make some more decisions. Like I said, I like um, the tightness here, so we'll have, you know, her strappings and stuff. Also, it's good to know that I, I appreciate you guys asking questions, but I also um, definitely explore what other artists talk about and, um, you know, listen to talks about design and concept. Um, listen to what other artists say about, you know, their drawing process and stuff. Um, Trojan Horse, Horse Was a Unicorn has these um, sketchbook series that are really good. Um, they're on YouTube. And they have a bunch of um, artists come in and share their sketchbooks and they kind of talk about like their process or why they like drawing or what what is it about stuff that they, you know, um, enjoy or what they like and don't like and stuff. It's really fascinating. You kind of get like a cool, you know, inside the mind of the artist experience. Um, highly recommend checking those out for sure. I think those are super fun. Kind of like this, um, just got like a, little sash thing, or like an extra little cloth that then the, the pants come out of. So there's some nicer, um, overlaps and stuff. Get something like that going. And we could try to make it more, um, you know, form fitting if we wanted to. I think this is fine for now. Give her kind of like longer shoulder pads, I think could be kind of fun. You know, and in 3D, we'll play a lot with like color and maybe some patterns and stuff. You know, um, I did that chipmunk night and we added a bunch of cool um, acorn um, patterns and stuff to uh, his clothing. So maybe we can do something kind of fun and similar here. She's got a little like sash on the side or something. It's really more about like picking shapes or um, starting with some basic shapes and then breaking those down uh further right so we started with like oh pants and then maybe we can split the top half up into something else and then we split this into another thing um i think a lot of it is just going to be exploring stuff that way oops sometimes my race doesn't want to race 
I think this shape can be really fun. So we're really more accentuating the her anatomy underneath with doing something like that too. And again, even her like fur shape here would be kind of triangular in nature. And some very um, fine dainty fingers. And I do like these beads still too. Um, And then again, if we have, you know, these circular beads in one spot, it's always probably a good idea to put them in another. But also we kind of can repeat that circular shape with the, the backpack thing that she has on her pack. Um, right? So there's another kind of like motif of something. But then we can also say where else can we, you know, put this stuff and maybe she's got little beads in her arms. Maybe it's a repeating shape also. I mean, this is gonna look like Rafiki's staff if we do this, I guess. But you know, you could easily repeat some other shapes elsewhere. Um, I think ultimately though, I'd want her holding, because since she's a student, I think ultimately we want her holding some sort of um, staff or weapon or something. So with weapons, I always like to add it to a new layer and then I'll... Um, can draw really easily straight lines first and kind of plot out everything. There is some kind of cool tasseling and stuff um, in my reference. I don't really have reference for what kind of weapon I would want. I do like the idea of some sort of bow or some, um, some sort of bow I think would be kind of cool. Or, um, you know, there's, I don't know what kind of weapon it's called, but they're kind of, they have like these cool, almost like shovel-like shape. But we could play with something so, you know, if that's the basis of the shape, or that was the initial idea, we can, we can again, just push it farther into the realm of fantastical, right? So I always like to start with, you know, something that I think of is, you know, something that's real world and then going, okay, how can we take that real world thing and uh, push it even farther into um, our world, the world that we're making. And I am drawing all this on the same layer as the weapon, but that's okay. I merge it all down anyway later. When there's like a lot of overlaps, it's easier to, you know, put on one. So I don't have to go in here and do this number where I erase away <laughs> the overlap um, of hand versus, you know. Weapon. like cool little shape or something down there i don't know but say we can easily now go that and like kind of just erase her foot away from here there you go we can merge it down and then erase away anything that oops one thing to erase that would be in front of that there we go and thank you, uh, Noman, for posting the sketchbook series. They're very cool. You should definitely check them out. I don't think there's a single one that I didn't find uh, absolutely fascinating, so. Cool. 
Cool, and then I'll do a quick, uh, well, I don't have to do actually a quick redraw of her face. I can just grab the sketch and I can just select the parts that are visible. And I can do a uh, copy, paste, and now I can hide the body and then I can merge this down. Fill in the gaps of anything. So yeah, I mean, something like that, you know, gives you a good jumping off point as to um, what we can do in 3D. You can see, I, I mean, I'm pretty sketchy when I, when I do this stuff. And then later I could, if I want to, go in with, like, you know, more refined line work. It's not necessarily necessary for this, so um, I think we're okay with kind of that as it lies. And then um, you got more beads or something. It's always about just adding slightly more detail and then slightly more detail and slightly more detail. Her arm is a little, feels a little broken, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Then I can isolate it, and then I can go to liquefy. And I can just move this out. We're going to get some weird stretchiness, but that's okay. Um, I just want to move her arm away, and then I can just erase away this stuff. Yeah, so now um, with this character, now we can do some, uh, we can either get into some color, you know, if we wanted to, or we could do some expressions. Um, I have a lot of fun with expressions, and I don't think we've really done that on this stream before, so um, I definitely want to try to play with some of that. I think it's super fun to try to figure out... Um, you know, what are things that your character would be doing? Um, and people for, you know, animation purposes, we do um, expression sheets all the time. So you can get, so you can stay on model even when their faces change. And it's definitely a difficult thing to do um, to look at your, oops, I always undo the new layer when I accidentally touch it. Um, so trying to stay on model now with who our character is while changing her expression, you know, and, you know, doing different angles and stuff now. So I want to do one where maybe she's uh, angry. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to look at this and say, what is the basic shape? Right. So we have kind of this basically. Um, and then I think making sure that I plot out where her uh, mask is, basically, where her face mask, where the skin is versus where the fur is, is going to be um, <clears throat> super important in blocking out, not only um, for her face as a character, but also for blocking out stuff in 3D. So, you know, something like a goggle face like this is actually pretty nice to have as a reference to turn something into space because if you have 
you know, goggles or like glasses. The moment to make that look like it's turning into space, you just got to make sure that, you know, one side is slightly thicker than the other and maybe slightly bigger. And now all of a sudden it looks like, you know, we're facing that way versus facing forward. So it's all about squishing and stretching stuff um, in order to, to turn things into space um, when it comes to drawing stuff. So having, so knowing that and like blocking that out first, you know, I'll know that I have this shape here and this shape is gonna be much thinner on the other side. You know, and first we can say, you know, what would her face from the side like this look like? And then we can think about, you know, what happens when she opens up her mouth. So if she scrunches up and opens up her mouth, you know, we can draw her mouth opening up. So now she's you know, yelling at somebody. And uh, monkeys always have pretty scary fangs, actually. So I kind of like the idea that when she gets angry, you can you can really see that. Tons of uh, artists also will have like mirrors on their desk. I don't, <laughs> but you can. I think it's super useful. Um, I definitely, while I'm thinking of this stuff, you know, I'll, I'll scrunch my nose or I'll furrow my eyebrows and think about, you know, um, what makes something feel angry. You know, scrunching of the eyes or a snarl, you know, if your nose is getting brought up and snarling. Also, there's like a sense of direction too. Um, and then feeling like everything is scrunching inward is important as well. So we can even exaggerate and play with this face shape even and exaggerate, you know, how high up that face shape kind of goes to, to make it feel like she's even angrier, you know, so we can play and push with these things. And you wouldn't see this uh, crazy. You wouldn't probably see the feather. We can, we can try to add it and see what it would look like. I think it's important to, to make sure that it's got some sort of directionality. And the idea of like squashing and stretching um, is super important when thinking about you know, character expressions, and then we've got her hair, which maybe is just more spiky or like more aggressive feeling. Um, and we can hide. Bit of a nostril flare. Um, another thing you can do also is raise the lips a bit more. So then you see the, the gums. That helps a lot too. I do this pretty tiny, so I'm struggling with the uh, lack of pixels, but you get the idea. It's also a good practice to figure out where the shoulders would be. Um, you know, she's like tense or hunched over or how she's yelling at somebody. Uh, maybe her neck is kind of like outstretched or something. Um, since there's some <laughs> rock and there's something about Mary here too. Did you just age yourself? I think you just did. Maybe not. Right, so we can add that intensity 
to her neck. And like maybe where her chest would possibly be. Pretty scary. She went from like, yeah, I'm confident to like, oh my god, do not mess with me. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I think it's super fun to try to capture again the same um, likeness of uh, a character. I made that so small. I wonder why I was struggling with pixels. Try another one. Again, trying to match that that basic shape that we have. Maybe she's kind of um, having a casual. I always like the uh, kind of cocky, cocky talking. I don't really know what she would call it. Again, finding. Uh, also, it's important to note that her eyebrows um, will make a lot of her face shape as well, right? So, um, if we have her eyebrows doing that, then her whole face shape where her skin is is going to do that, right? So, it's going to go across. So, her face shape is going to be very um, malleable for her expressions. Whoops. Flipping canvas shouldn't be an undo. Just just saying. Oh yes, and says he likes the animals that change from cute to really scary. I remember that was like a really um popular um like practical joke to throw on one of your friends being like look i got you this cute little you know stuffed animal and then it you know changes its face it's terrifying so adding a basic mouth shape Teeth are going to be a lot more chill. Right? And again, really playing around with how this face shape is going to be um, changing. I made it a little too long. There we go. Again, trying to keep that volume, you know, that I feel there should kind of feel the same regardless of whether she's, you know, stretching or squashing. The volume needs to stay the same. Oops. But yeah, I definitely implore you guys to um, do some fun, you know, expression studies with your character. It'll it'll really help bring 
give you an understanding of who that character is. Because I also think, you know, if you're really thinking about it correctly, you should be able to do an expression and be like, mm, that that doesn't really feel like my character, you know? Does my character ever really do that, you know? Is your character actually ever angry or is your character ever happy, you know? I mean, you can look at something as simple as like the idea of Snow White, right, you know? Grumpy is named Grumpy for a reason. Um, he's very rarely actually happy. Yeah, he's pretty grumpy the whole movie, so. And then, of course, um, you get to know your character a lot better, too, when you're trying to do multiple different angles and stuff as well. Um, and you get, like, a really good feeling and a solid understanding of um, who this character is in 3D. And even if you are not a 3D artist and gonna... or convert it to 3D later or anything like that, um, you know, doing 2D animation or something like that, it's still super important to understand the 3D volumes in which you're creating. 2D shapes from, you know. Um, so there's still like tons of validity in making sure that you understand your character from all angles. Oh, Synth brought up an interesting point saying um, that this character has a triangle shape, but most characters with triangle shapes um, can be considered like evil or um, they're known to have kind of like an evil intent behind them. And yeah, you're, you're definitely right. Normally when creating um, characters with certain shape language or design, we relate shapes to meaning certain things but you can again like understanding that but knowing how to break it is important i think one thing that makes her not feel evil is one her expression is very soft for the most part right um but also her her face is going upwards right so the shape really kind of feels more like a happy face um overall than it does a uh like a really aggressive triangle. It's a very elegant triangle, right? It's almost um, like fashion show <laughs> vibes or something. So it has this very uplifting feeling um, rather than feeling like aggressive or sharp for the sake of being sharp. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a very fine line between those things. We could probably make her feel evil fairly quickly, but a lot of it has to do with just also strictly the personality in which you place your character into. Um, but yeah, you make a good point of showing how we can easily break um, kind of a trope. But another thing too is these uh, face angles can also, or her, her hair can also describe how she's feeling. So we said that, you know, she has a very uplifting face, but what if she's sad? Um, we can kind of bring that face down. And everything should feel like weighted now, right? And honestly, this is definitely one of my favorite, some of my favorite stuff to draw. I feel like I don't do it enough, honestly. Because um, it brings so much 
life to your character. Um, and even for, so for even something like this, if her hair is normally up, maybe we can kind of droop it more. Right, so everything about her pose is telling you like down and sad. Um, so again, once you have that shape, don't be afraid to um, push it in the direction that will sell your your expressions and your feelings, like what that character is supposed to be in the moment. Oh God, we're gonna, is she crying? I don't know. Very soft, subtle cry. Maybe just one tear. Maybe two minutes. That's too many. Maybe just like one little sad tear. Maybe a little drip drop somewhere. The character super sad. I almost dropped a pencil. So yeah, just adding curvature to um, triangles will give it a whole nother emotion or feeling. And I think it's super fun to play with. It's it's definitely one of my favorite things about, you know, character design. It's one thing to, you know, model something or, or sketch something out in a, you know, a turntable or whatever for production, but you know, this is this is the this is the juice. It's the same as um you know, when we do our 3D characters in the T-pose, you're like, yeah, they're cool. But it's not until that last week, you know, when we pose it and you're like, oh, yeah, there there it is. That's that's what I draw, you know. That's a character now. Um, you know, and silhouette and stuff is important, but silhouette comes a lot with also, you know, the pose in which your character is in and describing that story. You know, and if she's sad, then like, do we have her? You know, we have a lot of, again, her shoulders would be super drooped. Sad faces are always really fun to draw. <laughs> Maybe I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I think they just I think they just express a lot. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of feeling that comes with um I guess I don't really relate to being angry, you know. Um, which is interesting. I mean, this is just my own thought process. I don't I don't get you know, I mean, people know me in real life. People, I don't get, I don't get very angry very often. I'm very, unless we talk about, you know, some why movies are bad or something. I get passionate. I'll say that. I get passionate. I don't get angry. Um, and so, like, anger for me, drawing it, um, actually comes a lot more difficult or did before than like feeling happy or feeling sad or something. Um, and I just think it's interesting as an artist, we can maybe draw certain things a lot easier just based purely on our experiences that we draw from, you know, pun intended, I guess, but. All right, let's do, what time is it? Okay, let's do one more and then maybe we can do just color want uh maybe we will have time to do some color or something <laughs> trying to think of what what other um also if you don't know how to convey an emotion or something um dude go back to the smiley face so like i don't know if i'm trying to do a like a shocked or or maybe a scared do it first as like a little smiley face. It's a scary nose. 
you know? Um, like if they're worried, you know, you can play around with um, different kind of mouth shapes and stuff and try to figure out like what, you know, the moment you make eye, eyes bigger too, like what happens if you make eyes bigger? Oh, it doesn't look so worried anymore, right? Um, so adjusting like pupil size or mouth shape size, like that looks more guilty, right? So combining different things that we know about basic human expression and um, right, if we had like a little smirk, she's like, <laughs> oops, I'm in trouble, right? So that's interesting, right? So just playing with um, the different shapes. Yeah, you can look at your emojis from uh, your phone. They're actually rather, rather useful. So if we do something like that, where they're just like, okay guys, and so oops, my bad, or something. Um, you know, does what happens when we make our eyes a little bigger? Does that work? Or is it like, mm, what happens if we maybe, you know, shift her eyes upwards, right? That's interesting. Um, what happens if we put our eyes the other way, right? So um, these subtle shifts, I totally implore you to like, kind of play with. Um, Trying to play with some mouth shapes that could be interesting. I'm like, huh. so when I'm like, oh, I'm guilty. I see I'm pulling, I'm pulling down on my mouth, but there's also still like a like a slight smile. It's very weird, very weird uh, expression. We'll see if this one ends up being catastrophe. Who knows? I do think one side needs to be, you know, bigger. So there's like this triangle taper or something. I think something like that could be kind of cool. So now that I have my emoji, right? Now that we can try to personify that onto our character. Um, I'm gonna start with her mass shape. You know, if she's feeling guilty, you know, if it's feeling down or heavy. I think there's a lot to be said about the squinting of the eyes being like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oops, <laughs> my bad, whatever it may be. Probably her hair's like slightly down, you know, she kind of feels bad. So she's not at her peak because I was going to make a One Piece reference, but I also don't like making One Piece references because if you haven't seen it yet, you should just watch it and I can't say anything about it, so... Maybe your ears are a little perked up being like, huh? like it's almost like a shoulder shrug um, or something, right? Maybe slightly, I, th I feel like the uplifting, like huh? it's kind of like a shoulder shrug.
right? So we can use again that uh, that emoji guide. <laughs> um, if we get kind of lost as to, you know, what makes an expression, because I think you'd be very surprised if you know how to feel surprised, but how to draw surprise. And so I think breaking it down into an emoji form um, can be super, super helpful for that stuff. The big eyes and stuff looking upwards, super helpful, giving the very worried. Because our, I mean, our face can only contract in so many different ways, right? Because of the muscles that we have on our face. Um, but when you combine all of them together, you can get a lot of different things, you know. If you have angry eyebrows and you have a angry mouth, right? That's very different than having angry eyebrows and smiling right so when you just combine and change one thing or another you get very different expressions and very different emotions um so i think it's really important to like kind of play with it and see see kind of what you get maybe a little flatter I'm assuming her eyes feel her eyes feel a little too far apart. Just a little bit. All right, there we go. Cool. There's some some little expressions, so I can go ahead and grab these little guys. I'll just cut those away, and then you know we can orient these to be. A little, she's like sad alone down here, so we can move her up a little smaller. So now we have like a nice little collection of stuff. Um, I actually also I'm gonna flip that one just so we have a nice variance of like one looking this way, that way, just feels a little more varied. Um, with this too, usually I like to, um, uh eventually do like poses and stuff which we kind of went over last time with the creature design so don't have time for that today but that's something else that i would usually do is you know you can do some expressions and then you can do some cool poses um and totally just take poses from you know your reference you know i would just pose her and you know something looks like that and something looks like that you know, maybe even play with what that kind of emotion would look like or being caring or, you know, let let your reference like really drive your ideas. Um, makes a lot, your job a lot easier, you know, you're letting your other things do the work for you. Oh, Leticia is saying, hi, Ashley. Nice to see your work process. Keep inspiring. If you guys remember, I, I hope I'm right that that's the previous archetype host tuning in and saying hi. So I appreciate it. Cool. So now we're going to, um, ooh. ah, whatever. So now I'm going to take our sketch. Um, I usually sketch actually a little lighter than like black most of the time. So I'm just going to turn the brightness down. So that way it's black, black outlines. And then, um, go ahead and Gonna try to quickly do this for you guys. We'll do we'll lay in some colors. I do feel like if your design if you're trying to go for simple, you're outlining your design and like capturing the silhouette should actually be pretty easy. Um if you're like sitting there trying to like really outline stuff and it's taking forever to get the silhouette. Maybe you have a too complicated a silhouette. Not that that's a bad thing, but I find it's it usually takes less time to outline your stuff than it does to to actually draw it, because all the hard work now is done. We we did all the 
shape language and whatnot. So I'm just going in here and I don't know if you can even tell what I'm doing right now, but I'm just lasso selecting. Um, I like getting just like clean lasso shapes. You can also go in and, um, you know, outline it and then fill drop it. Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'll do that and sometimes I do this method. I think it really depends on whether I feel like um, outlining it all over again. This feels just like a different process than drawing. So I think I just put myself in a mode where I'm like, ooh, I'm on to the next stage, you know? So I think it's just like a weird artist thing. I'm like, I choose to do one thing because of how I feel. Not really because it has any merit. Which is totally fine. I do usually have a pretty shaky hand. I think I've mentioned that before. So for me, um, outlining in little sections like this is usually more helpful than trying to do it any other way. I always have to go in and clean up my drawing. I'm not going to this time because I'm just trying to plot in color before I leave you lovely people. Um, so. There we go. I'm also going to remove just this little bit that I don't want. I think that's everything. Oh, wait, no. Forgot our foot. I will almost always forget one section. Almost always. You're like, oh, I forgot to do our entire face. Ooh, that was messy. That was nice. Go ahead and drag and drop that. Cool. See, I always forget one. Always. Make noises. There we go. Cool. And now I can go in here if I want to and, you know, um, clean up any line work or erase away stuff if I need to. But again, I'm not gonna... Look at how shaky this is. Look at that. Oof. They call me an artist. So shaky. It's not a nervousness thing. I just, I actually just am always, I'm just so shaky when it comes to drawing. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Cool. So now we have our, you know, silhouette. Oh, since us watching Charlie Chaplin is helpful to watch exaggerated emotion, definitely. Um, they have so much body language and movement and stuff because they can't use their words. So it's super handy. It's a good reference. Um, Terry on Twitch is also saying, asking um, that he just got his, his first computer this year. And is it too late to become a digital artist? And the answer is no. If you've already been drawing, you know, um, if you already are an artist and already enjoy drawing and stuff, um, you already have the fundamentals and skills to draw digitally. They're just different tools, you know? It's just a more advanced pen. That's really all it is. Um, so it's nothing to be afraid of or to feel like you're too late. There's no such thing as too late for um, being an artist in any sort of field. You know, it's just your journey, so try really hard not to compare yourself with where other people are on that journey. Um, Cause it's, it's yours and you're, it's not a, you know, it's not a race, it's a marathon. And quite honestly, if you really want to put the analogy correctly, it's just you running if you feel like it. <laughs> um, it's not really about where everybody else is. So I think what would be cool is to have her, I like, I, I still like the colors that we have here. Um, so I think I want to do that, but then, you know, this bluish blackish fur with um, Shaolin orange might be, might be pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and alpha lock that. Change that color real quick. On alpha lock that.
and then maybe um I mean here the pants I think are kind of the same but we can look at maybe some different breakup like this white is kind of cool um never go full white your white should always be still pretty low in value because in, in context to other things it'll look the brightest if it's the lightest value but it does not have to be literally white um it's a good thing to know never go full black and never go full white um full black if you're doing like inking and mignola type stuff is different but when it comes to value ranges try to keep your value ranges in places that make sense Again, your limitations of anything are going to be your best friend when it comes to creating color palettes or, you know, anything else like that is going to be, oh, actually her whole, this whole thing is white and then she has strappings. So we'll, we'll change the color of the strappings. There we go. Um, and in the reference here, this face is just black but i think i want to play with you know i really like this type of face where it's a really cool bright color in contrast to everything around her so um i think we'll play with something like that it doesn't have to be that exaggerated but maybe something that's like a more blue just something that's a breakup it could be a complimentary color um, but if we do something like this, right, so if we block that out, we block out her fingers, because anything that's her skin now will be this color, right? So we'll block out this stuff. Fingers. And then, um, so we can say, oh, is it going to be, you know, kind of like homogenous colors, or we can just go, what I like to do and why I keep it all on separate layers is um, we could do this hue saturation value and we can just hue shift it and say, okay, is, do we actually like, you know, that more? Is that more interesting than keeping it blue or like what other colors could we do? Uh, but I think you'd be kind of surprised at like maybe what you would think is interesting. I think purple is kind of cool. Because purple is also a little more complementary to orange. Um, so it's not exactly just blue, but it's not full on spectrum of like red, um, which just feels like skin. I do kind of like that color too, but I think we're, I think we'll play with like kind of a maybe purplish hue. I think that could be kind of fun. And then we will add. Oops, did I not? Oops, I didn't clipping mess that. Oh, it probably undoed my stupid layer, as it does. Go in here and erase this away. Also, when you're first blocking in color, I like to just get all the color in first. Um, and then figure out maybe what color they can be. Because um, again, when in, without like, all the context of all the colors, you can't really tell what's gonna read right and what's not. Um, also, I want to, you know, I like the white as well. On the fur. So we can play with her fur and maybe she's got white tipped hair. Martinez from YouTube. Hello. Maybe some white tipped ears. You know, maybe she's got a white tipped tail. You know, now, now again, with this color context, oh, I think I also want to add um, some whiteness going down her chest. Whoops, what am I doing? Oh, that's what I'm drawing on. Don't draw on that, actually. I think maybe just more subtle, 
some sort of design pattern that goes down her chest like that. Be cool. Maybe play with what color this sash could be. Maybe it's like a really, um, maybe more like a maroonish red. Again, just blocking in some stuff. Now looking at it, I'm like, oh, maybe that would be cool if it's actually like a really um saturated blue or something maybe that'd be cooler uh martina's on youtube saying so much shapes reminds me of uh, lion king i appreciate that i'll take it as a compliment <laughs> i didn't fill in all the little bracelet oops that's okay Maybe this uh, blue sash. Again, it's better to probably try to reuse colors in other areas um, than try to come up with all new colors all the time. Especially with like more simple design ideas like this where it's more stylized stuff. Um, having like just a few colors to work with is usually better limitation than having more. Less is more, almost always. Oops. Reese that away. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that, because it's bothering me, because the silhouette is nice to be able to see these balls go around her wrist. And now we can figure out, um, you know, what, what color shape this, uh, maybe it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's just metallic. But yeah, I like to just block in real simple colors like this first, and then um, and then you can iterate, you know, on top of it. And you can change colors really easily on the fly if they're all kind of separate colors. Um, you know, for example, I'm not sure. Um, I want there to be some color breakup on this here, but I'm not sure if I want a darker value or a lighter value, or, you know, do I want a color that kind of harmonizes, or do I want one that's kind of contrasty? Um, so then again, I can go to that hue saturation and brightness, and I can turn up the hue or lower the brightness. I actually do think keeping it more subtle, you know, I don't think Ooh, Goku. We got some Goku colors. It's kind of exciting. Not gonna lie. Oh, Goku colors. Um, you guys have to stop me from Goku colors. <laughs> but if that's the case, well, let's see what happens when we... Whoops. Not Goku colors entirely, but I... Let's let's harmon or harmonize all that stuff. 
And then maybe for the belts, maybe they're not exactly the same color, but we can kind of desaturate that and make it a little darker. So it's still blue, but still saturated bluish, you know? And then what really pops is the, uh, is like the shirt over her. And there we go. And then as a little extra thing, um, I like to add little gradients to uh, characters. Like arms and stuff, so we can you know, maybe make that even a little darker. Just like little gradients like from the hand going upwards. We can always use a little softer brush for this to kind of erase away. Hopefully you guys can see that. Very subtle gradients. I can see it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, but they're just like little subtle gradients. Um, and so, yeah, there you have it. Um, yeah, so I think this is pretty cool so far. I'm now looking at um, the rest of the colors that we did. I actually don't like the purple anymore. See? Look at that. I think it might be more interesting if she just stays more blue. But we can always play with it in uh, in 3D later. Um, <laughs> since you're talking about Super Mario Bros. by yourself, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, cool. Well, I think this kind of wraps up our um, character. So again, we're doing the students. So the idea is maybe she's like a martial arts student. And then the idea for next month will probably to be whoever her teacher is. But for now, we have this design. Um, so if you join me next week, you'll see me take this uh, design and we're going to bring it into 3D and sculpt it out and have a lot of fun. I hope you guys are enjoying um, this process as much as I do. I love just being able to sit and sketch and sculpt with you guys and looking forward to posing this one too. Um, no sense, not two characters at the same time. Ne next month we'll do the mentor, right, which will be her teacher. Because each... each um, each archetype that I do, I try to do at least two that fit within the same world so we can have kind of a cool like design consistency that we have to play with. Um, instead of just kind of blue boxing or white boxing characters um, out of nowhere, I think it's fun to give them more context. So anyway, thank you guys for joining me. Again, this was Archetype, sponsored by Lenovo and AMD. I am your host, Ashley. Um, tune in next week for uh, block-in sculpting. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.